Hi there, uh, I'm Yorick, this is Brad, and we should have been doing this with Kurt, but he's stuck in the, in the transit, so it will be just the two of us today. Um, we'll give the uh, short presentation of FreeCAD. Is it okay if I do the, the introduction? Okay, uh, then I will just give a short introduction of the project for who doesn't know it, and then we'll show a little bit of example of what we do around FreeCAD and uh, other stuff. Um, so for, for who doesn't know FreeCAD yet, uh, it's a um, 3D modeling application. Um, basically, um, we used to say it's a um, 3D application made to build objects that will be built in the real world uh, to make the difference with uh, like applications um, that are used to, to make animation or... or um, movies or stuff, stuff like that, which is not the focus of FreeCAD, because it has all those precision tools uh, to make really precise uh, things, such as the thing. It's really made to, to make s uh, s such objects. From people use it to make small electronic components up to buildings. Um, I'm an architect myself, I use it to make, to, to draw buildings. Uh, Brad is in CNC, he uses more for, for CNC. And there, there's a wide range of uses uh, around FreeCAD. And um, basically, it's, mm, most of FreeCAD users use it to do 3D printing. That's it, I believe, its main use today. Um, it began in 2002 with two developers, and now there are like, I would say, 20 or 30 people committing every week or, or so. So it's really growing, and it's going quite well, actually. And an interesting part of it, that's what we want to showcase today, uh, is that we have, it's not really a project with, uh, I would say more than half of the developers are not from the programming background. I myself, am an, I'm an architect, Brad is also not a formal programmer, and most of the developers didn't learn programming formally. They just came to the project, and since it's quite easy to, to grab some Python from it because it's uh, you have the, that Python console all the time. Everything you do in FreeCAD uh, reflects in the Python console, um, which is around here. Every time you push a button, uh, you get actually a Python command printed and executed there. So it's quite uh, didactic. Uh, you use FreeCAD and you learn some Python on the way. And um, most of the developers entered the the projects that way, actually. Many of them. There are some professional programmers as well. Uh, so this is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, you want to start? Or no, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will show you a little bit of what I do with FreeCAD. Uh, I'm an architect by trade. Uh, I do, that's my day job. And um, Actually, we have this architectural studio, myself more uh, four or five people, uh, which is almost totally open source. Uh, it has no physical location. Uh, all the projects we do are mostly open source. Uh, we just um, keep the, the private data of the clients uh, encrypted. So all the project goes on the GitHub repo and uh, just the private data is encrypted uh, so public cannot read it. Um, and this is a kind of example of what we do in, in we use a lot of FreeCAD in it, uh, but this is a property platform uh, from Autodesk or Revit. Uh, just to show you that uh, whatever you do in FreeCAD is quite now reliably um, interchangeable with property applications. Uh, some of our team use it because they want it, um, but uh, the the idea is not to be a zealot and, and say we only use Impressions. Some clients want the proprietary format uh, as an output, so you have to deliver the proprietary format. But the idea is to say anything works. Like um, you can plug various components in, in the tool chain and it should work seamlessly. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Some are working with FreeCAD, some are working with this, and it should just go around. Um, that's the, the our office. It's on GitHub, and um, all the projects are there. Um, that's the latest one we've done. We're doing, 
and uh, it's fully developed the open source way. Um, so this, these are the project files. Uh, and it, it, it looks, uh, these are where our team is, is located. Um, this is how we use uh, Riot for discussion. And all the technical discussions happen uh, online as well. And it's, this looks like common for open source developers. That's how an open source project works. But I can tell you that for architecture, it's totally uncommon. Uh, people don't work that way, and we're really trying to um, bring the open source way to, to an architecture office. And FreeCAD is really at the center, uh, center of it. Um, everything we learn from developing FreeCAD like reflects in, in that in that office. Uh, that's another project we've been doing uh, that have last year. Um, that's a WikiHouse based uh, building we've built in, in Brazil. Uh, and it's basically um, to showcase how things mix around FreeCAD. Uh, like basically it, it's a house built by, by people, even people wi without uh, knowledge of building. Uh, and it's all made of pieces of wood that are cut by a CNC machine. Um, and that are assembled, there are numbers printed on the, on the pieces and you have um, a manual that shows you piece four goes into piece two and you mount this thing like that without any nail, without any glue, without any any other thing, just the strength of the of the, the junctions. Uh, and it's all open source. We took it from its original project. Uh, we modified it and the result is also open source. Um, that's it for my part. So I'm going to talk primarily about the path workbench, which is uh, the CAM functionality. And this is, is a really great example of what Yorick was talking about with uh, kind of a cross-discipline participation on the project. Uh, this started out in 2014, and I came at the CNC CAM thing as a, as a hobbyist and was just uh, one of a lot of people that were frustrated that there was no good CAM application uh, in the open source and particularly the Linux world. And so what we did was we were already users of FreeCAD but uh, wanted the CAM part. And so we, we partnered with Yorick first and uh, got the, the core design for the, the, uh, the C++ part in um, in FreeCAD that handles storage of the actual toolpath data and the visualization, but none of the user-facing functionality, none of the um, job control and tool setup and things like that. And then that part was all written by, um, by me in part, and then more of the uh, uh, community members coming on little by little. And at first, it was really, really bad. Um, and I whined to Yorick about not knowing what I was doing. And he said, don't worry about it. Just, just, just do it. And somebody will come along and fix it later. And, <laughs> and I, honestly, that's what happened is, is uh, better programmers than me came on, refactored code, and the thing started to gather users and get some momentum behind it. So this is a, the, the typical workflow. We're designing a, you know, a, like a bench. Uh, and you're starting out with a model, and then within uh, FreeCAD, you have to take the components and reorient them for cutting on a machine. So you have to lay them out into a, into a 2D arrangement, uh, like in the upper right corner, and then generate the tool path that's going to move a cutter around those shapes, uh, lifting it to clear the, the spaces in between. And the bottom left shows that operating on an actual CNC router, and then the final uh, product down below. So that's that's a typical 2D or 2.5D process. The uh, where we're now starting to move into is a little bit more sophisticated tool paths. Like uh, this is adaptive clearing. So when you're you're trying to uh, mill away metal from a shape, you need to keep the cutter at the same level of engagement with the material the entire time to avoid it speeding up and slowing down and. Uh, and breaking and so forth. And so you're seeing a much more sophisticated tool path uh, in the upper left. That was uh, to mill an aluminum block that's used as a brand on a wooden uh, uh, cover. Uh, this is another area where we're moving into. This is a, a fourth axis where you've got a shape that needs to be milled on multiple sides. And so we're rotating it 
um, I'm cutting a piece of foam uh, in the upper right, and then so the, the the tool path has to recalculate for each position as we rotate the part around. Um, this is uh, where we're, we're now calculating surfaces and doing more more smoothing passes, or in the case of the one on the left, where we want to do the. Uh, a regular operation, but we want to do it on multiple faces of a part. So you need to reorient the part on a fourth axis or a fifth axis. Well, the tool paths that you're seeing here, the work that was done, is by one of the newer developers that has joined, and he's a Spanish teacher in Oklahoma, and he does this as a hobby. And it, it's surprising how much he's been able to move it forward, um, you know, with a little bit of coaching and then just, you know, guts and determination. So, um, this is one other area. One of our other developers, uh, who's a real programmer, a serious programmer, has, has wanted to go one step farther and integrate direct control of the CNC machine within FreeCAD. So instead of the traditional, you, you set up a tool path and then you post-process it and you get a, a G-code file, and then you take that over to the CNC machine and load the G-code file and run it. What he can do with this is, from FreeCAD, he can connect directly to a CNC machine that's running Machine Kit, and select the, the path uh, job that he wants to run. And the numbers that you're seeing in the top left of the 3D window, that's the DRO, the position coming directly from the machine. So the, the indicator um, in the 3D window, on the, uh, kind of on the, the uh, left side, is the, the cutter position within that window, and when he runs the job, you'll actually see the cutter move and follow the path that's generated. So yeah, this is, you know, now a developer who came in initially for one little feature has started to, you know, make bigger and bigger contributions, and now his contributions are getting outside of the path um, cam workbench and getting into other aspects of FreeCAD as well. And that's really a very typical process. Um, the thing about CAM is that the community is running a, a wide variety of machines, and each of those machines needs unique G-code generated for it. So one of the first places that we're seeing developers come into the project is they're writing a custom post-processor for the machine that they've got, or for the machine that they sell, if it's a, a company. And, and that's a really easy contribution to make, but then invariably it's like, ah, it does everything except that one thing that we need. And then it's a feature. And then eventually they start working on the core stuff. So it's, it's been a lot of fun, and it's, um, it continues to accelerate. And I think we got some fun stuff coming up in the future. So that's what I've got. Um, I'm going to do Q&A. So these are, oh, these are a few of the post-processors that we have right now from Linux CNC, Smoothie, uh, Centroid, Dynapath. So quite a few of the most common machines that you're going to see in, uh, uh, especially in hacker spaces or small companies, we, uh, we can generate G-code for right now. There is a, an add-on workbench that can be a, uh, installed through the add-on uh, manager that's uh, called Sheet Metal. And you can both design for Sheet Metal and take parts that were designed that way and unfold them into a 2D representation. So yes, it's, it is there. I won't say it works for every model, but it's, it's there. Yeah. I'm sorry? Uh, he asked well, what libraries we're using for uh, toolpath generation. Right now, the, most of the, the 2D and 2.5D operations use uh, a module within FreeCAD called Path Area. That's basically an implementation of the Clipper lib the, uh, uh, by Angus Johnson. It's been around forever. Uh, we also use OpenCam lib and OpenVeroni a little bit that are uh, for doing uh, 
the, the Veroni thing is not merged right now. That's in one, a branch on my repo, but we can do like centerline engraving of fonts. And the uh, open cam lib we use for the, the, like the surfacing that you saw in there. Yeah. So he asking uh, what are the, the the best arguments to to switch to FreeCAD as a BIM platform? Uh, I would say basically the freedom that uh, all other platforms, commercial platform, would try to lock you in uh, in a universe where you just use their platform and their file formats, and you will have to use their other solutions of their family together and by using a free software basically you free yourself f from that i would say technically you basically can do in freecad the same as you can do with commercial platform almost like every f uh, free software you have to search a little bit by yourself for some solution that are not so obvious but basically technically it's there you can do it and um i would say the the best argument is that is the freedom and the hackability because FreeCAD is totally hackable. You do it, you do what you want with it. You reprogram it. You write macro. Uh, you can. It might be just five lines of code, so it doesn't need to be like entering the programming world, and you already make it do what you want. And it's extremely easy on FreeCAD, and it's really hard on other platform, even with tools like Dynamo, etc. Uh, which are not easy, and um, so it's basically another world, another way to, to see things. Yes? Uh, you said that you use Git for uh, your project files, and do you have any good uh, recommendation about uh, what you're using? And you said uh, if there are any plans to include this inside the like do you have uh, a way to have bits between the files and stuff like that? Because I think that this is the biggest thing that we Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question is, uh, um, what about using Git with, with FreeCAD and with architectural work, uh, workflow? And uh, are there any plans to integrate Git better with, with FreeCAD? Uh, say, yes, we use Git a lot, and um, it works. And it has those limitations that you say. Um, we have already a couple of tools uh, in FreeCAD to work with Git directly, but um, let's say the advantage uh, of it is basically uh, keeping you free to manage it outside of FreeCAD, and it's actually a, a good thing um, that it's not tied in FreeCAD and you just manage your files the way you want. Uh, without the way FreeCAD developers would think you would need to. Uh, so, yeah, you have a plugin in the add ons where you can have a Git panel in FreeCAD and you can commit from there. But even me, I wrote it and I don't use it uh, because it's more convenient to do your file management yourself outside of it. Uh, and uh, on the IFC side, IFC is a file format specifically for. for uh, construction models. Uh, yes, we have already begun to have a couple of diff tools and tools that allow you to, to, to see a difference with, between one version and another version of the file. There is one in the BIM Workbench in FreeCAD. Uh, there is one being developed for uh, for Blender as well. Blender begin to have a good IFC uh, interface, and so you begin to have in the whole open source world several things that are bettering in that uh, in that regard um, and so yeah I, b I believe pretty soon we'll be able to use IFC files the right way let's say the open source way with all, all the features uh, Is there any way to sort of get that, that kind of functionality into the assembly? 
Well, the assembly workbench, the, the question has to do with the need for detecting, if I, correct me if I paraphrase wrong, detecting collisions uh, or interferences between parts uh, within assemblies. Can you explain a little bit more how you see the overlap to the CAM? With a part, okay. So how does a, a tool interfere with a part? For the, the 2.5D, the, the easier uh, kinds of tool paths that we've generated prior, uh, it, it's very simple offsetting. So there's no detection of whether or not the part is colliding with the model. It's simply offsetting uh, a ra the radius of a tool away from the, the lines in or out. Um, the the open cam lib the, for the surfacing part what it does is it, it takes the actual shape of a tool and pushes it against the shape of the, the model until there's an overlap between them, and that's the control point for that step in the tool path. So I don't see a, a, a direct way to generalize that from CAM into, uh, into assemblies. Um, beyond that, the assembly part of FreeCAD is is under heavy development right now. In fact, it's more a combination of uh, add-on workbenches. Uh, and I'm not qualified to say, but yeah, that's about where that's at. Uh, yeah. one in, one out. Yeah. Uh, for so, so the question is about uh, alternative discussion forum for development of FreeCAD, is that correct? So right now everything is done through a PHPBB um, forum, uh, which has an enormous amount of activity to the point that it's become almost unwieldy. It's, it's difficult or impossible to keep up. The, the development is broken down into channels, so there's a dedicated path cam channel where most of the discussion about the, the cam stuff happens, and the same thing for Arch and the other workbenches. But a lot of the functionality uh, or the development needs span multiple workbenches. So I would say yeah, it's, it's talked about, but I don't think we have a good answer for what, what a replacement would look like or how to migrate to it. If you've got ideas about how how we can improve that or specific thing specific problems to address, you know. So the question is about uh, energy efficiency modeling in, in FreeCAD. <clears throat> uh, basically, yeah, you can do it. Basically, what works at the moment is uh, producing um, IFC models from FreeCAD and exporting to a software that accepts uh, IFC formats, such as OpenStudio, and then they're converted into an energy model. The problem is that... Um, for uh, energy analysis software, you need a very, very specific, simplified model, which is basically each room, like this one, is a box, and each face of the box has properties of how it lets uh, heat go go through. Uh, and it's a very simple model, very different than what you use to, to make the building, uh, where you really want to, to model the, the, the walls and everything. Um, so at the moment, it's a bit tricky, and we cannot uh, directly from FreeCAD output a model that's ready for energy analysis. But that's something I would like to have, uh, to make. And we must think a little bit better how to do that, um, how to, let's say, model the, the traditional way uh, with walls that have thickness and everything, and from that extract an analysis model. And it's doable. We will have a couple of ideas, but not, not no real plan, a practical plan 
on how to do that yet. But yeah, that's definitely on, on the on the list. So the question is, uh, what programming language does FreeCAD use? Uh, basically, the, the core is all programmed in C++, and all the functionality on top of it is mostly Python. Uh, basically, the, 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 the C++ and Python interface are very similar. Uh, so we used to say, basically, you can work in FreeCAD either in Python or C++, and it's more a matter of your own choice. Than a matter, than a technical matter, and uh, because you can basically do the same in both languages, uh, you can program a workbench fully in Python, fully in C++, or a mix of both. Uh, it depends mostly on on your preferences. And uh, most uh, libraries that we use inside the project have both C++ and Python uh, interface. Uh, so, for example, the Qt, Qt for the, the, the interface, you can access it from both languages. Uh, and the same goes for every lib library that we use in, inside FreeCAD. Um, so it's really, really convenient to use any of those two languages. And basically, the data are the two that are used in, in FreeCAD. Uh, so the question is, uh, what um, geometry formats are the most common to uh, commonly used in FreeCAD? Um, I would say STEP is the most common one. Um, STEP is a solid-based format. Uh, STEP format has like uh, the, the solids are defined by their faces, and those faces can be nerves that can be like defined by geometrical curves. Uh, so basically, you can just represent about anything with that. Um, and it's a very, very solid file format that's there since ever, and all the engineering work world still uses uses it. Uh, so I would say that it's the best format to work with in, in FreeCAD. STL is used a lot for 3D printing, but uh, STL, uh, inside an STL file, you don't only have points and triangles. So your curves will get faceted, turned into small facets and so you can output things easily from FreeCAD to STL but it's really hard to get back uh, an STL into FreeCAD and you won't have the curves anymore um, so that's a good output format and it's not a good input format step is good for input and output so it's basically what most people use so FreeCAD can import and FreeCAD can import and export uh, just about any solid yeah. model format, BRAP, uh, yeah, like IGES, yeah, DXF, et cetera. Maybe one more? Or one more question? Um, just related to uh, modeling part, I've noticed now integration of several finite uh, element modeling tools in, in FreeCAD. Can you uh, just outline the roadmap about uh, integrating? I, I, at the moment, I find it very difficult to follow the, the evolution of, uh, and get started with finite element modeling. So, is there any plan on integrating 